Okay, we're jumping right in here, and this is how I import my illustrations into Illustrator. I don't have a scanner, so I unfortunately have to use my phone, and that's why I pull these into Photoshop so I can adjust the levels a little bit to get these as black and white as possible, because then when I import them into Illustrator, it makes it a whole lot less trouble to use the image trace feature, um, which I use for these illustrations because the number of points in the vector shapes doesn't really matter for my purposes. If this were some other kind of job, if this were a logo design or something, and I didn't want um, all of the character of the lines, since I don't have a fancy iPad, since I don't have a fancy, um, you know, touch screen on my laptop or um, any kind of tablet or anything like that. I just use the tools that I have and I make it work. Um, so here I was selecting the background because I had enough of a contrast that I could delete that. And now I'm adjusting the black and white levels, the contrast even more so that again, when I pull it into Illustrator, it will more easily recognize the shapes and there will be less modification that I end up having to do. So here I am just copying this and then I'm coming back into Illustrator, that was Photoshop, and I'm pasting it and you can see it's really huge. Um, I just zoom out and then I go to grab it and make it smaller. This part doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going up to my image trace feature and then Illustrator is going to make vector shapes. And if you don't know the difference between roster and vector, a vector shape retains the crisp clean line quality no matter how much you reduce it or how much you enlarge it and it also stores less image data so your file size ends up being smaller than an image like a JPEG which you've probably seen some fuzzy JPEG images and that's usually because um, they were blown up and they didn't have the image data to be blown up um, you know or they were saved in a um, inequality that loses the definition and the detail. So here I'm just positioning it on my final page in my artboard. As I mentioned in previous videos, my goal was to do uh, 42 illustrations. So the way I've set my artboards up in Illustrator, um, they're eight and a half by 11 pages. There's no bleed, which means the images stay within the margins of the page. So you don't have to worry about things getting cut off. Although as I look at some of my illustrations, once I upload and proof this in create space, they may flag me because um, some of the images look like they do get a little too close to the margins, but this will be really easy to, um, to modify page by page if I need to and um, re-upload to my main file and then update in the proof. But because I'm trying to do this so quickly, because was it just yesterday or the day before, I decided that I was gonna offer this coloring book for sale in the local art gallery's holiday market. That means that I need to get this finished, uploaded and printed ASAP. Uh, so I did the last three illustrations last night imported them here, that's what you're seeing. And today, which is what I'm about to show you next, I'm going into the pages, uh, the copy pages that I had saved out. Uh, side note here, I'm just zooming out to show you as I scroll through this PDF that it has created a PDF with each page as its own entity. It saves the pages or the artboards as separate pages and uh, that's the way it's organized. Um, but in any case, the next bit that you're going to see me do is go into edit or remind myself of the copy that I used in my last book since I did not save a hard copy. Um, we just moved in August at the beginning of August and it was kind of a last minute move. So I got rid of as much stuff as I could and that involved donating almost all of the hard copy coloring books I had left of my first iteration and... Um, donating them to my son's school for gifts and raffles and things like that. So um, in any case, I saved the individual pages out of my initial PDF draft. And here I'm retyping all of this. The reason I'm retyping it is because when you save a PDF, the safest way for printing is to do what's called converting your fonts to outlines. And so there's a process in Illustrator or, um, even other programs where you save the fonts, the letters as shapes, you convert them to shapes instead of a font. And that avoids 
um, you know, getting to a printer and then if the printer doesn't have the font that you used um, and it's not embedded or maybe they can't work with embedded fonts, then that would completely distort your entire layout and um, really mess things up. And so it's always safer to do what's called converting your fonts to outlines in order to preserve that. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, here I am editing my URLs because they have changed significantly in the last three years. Um, I changed my Instagram to Magic with Melly. I changed pretty much everything to Magic with Melly and then made my Magic with Melly site as an umbrella for my Oracle cards, for my coloring books, for my uh, original abstract artwork, for my graphic design and web design, for pretty much everything. Um, yeah, and so here I'm just altering and for whatever reason, the, the PDF of the last file, I don't know where I put <laughs> the final PDF from my original coloring book. I just have these select pages and they were saved as a PDF and so it took out some of the information. And so in order to edit these shapes, I actually had to completely recreate them. And uh, that's just the nature of the beast. So that is what we are doing right here is, you know, just adjusting spacing. It's gonna look pretty much the same I didn't really create this as a hard and fast logo. I just want to maintain the same look and feel so that my second Animals of Inspiration coloring book has consistency with the first and there's nothing that's disjointed or people aren't wondering, oh, is this something new? Is this something old? Um, this is a continuation of my last one. My last coloring book also, I mean, admittedly was hastily made, not in that it was shoddily put together, but that in, you know, I wanted to see if I could self-publish a coloring book. And so I took illustrations that I had already done. Uh, some of them I only had, I'd given away or sold. And so I didn't have the originals anymore. And I ended up having to work with photos that I had taken and posted wherever and try to convert those to vectors. And in some cases, um, you know, the lines are a little bit weird. Um, they're not as clean as they could be. But to me, I felt like that gave character to the coloring book. And that also helped me demonstrate, you know, do what you can with what you have. You don't have to have everything perfect. There are always workarounds. There's a workaround for pretty much anything that you would need to do. I mean, even, you know, I'm using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and, um, you an acrobat and you could use you know other programs there are ways that if you wanted to use a free tool like canva that you could um, and you know and when i do coaching with my clients that's the kind of coaching that we do is we say okay what are your resources what's your time what's your funding um, what's your software and hardware situation and then we find a way to make it work because there are always ways to make it work it may be you know a little bit work around -ish. <laughs> but there's ways to make it work. And um, I don't believe that you should ever wait to put something out in the world because, you know, if I hadn't put my first coloring book out into wor the world and then made two animal coloring books and then made a couple mini coloring books and then been commissioned to create coloring books for some animal shelters, I wouldn't be able to do this as quickly as I can. I wouldn't understand the process. I wouldn't be able to advise others on the process. I wouldn't be able to make this one better. Um, you know, and having the time, having created additional illustrations without even knowing that I was going to create another coloring book out of them or without that being the plan, you know, being at this point now where I can add, I can add my experience, you know, add new mantras, come up with new characters. I've given myself that time. Whereas when I created the first one, I was really just gathering what I had. Uh, so here you can see me, I was editing the copy for my, where they came from, you know, the origin of the Animals of Inspiration. I thought about just keeping it the way it was, but I wanted to add some extra stuff and kind of shorten it, shorten certain parts of the description. So I did, I typed it up in Notes, the Notes application on my Mac, and then I just copied and pasted it into here as opposed to 
um, just directly typing it in Illustrator. And then I save it, convert all the fonts to outline, save it as a PDF. And now I'm going in to find um, the last four <laughs> pages that I need to edit. I've obviously sped this up significantly because I didn't want you to have to sit here watching me click and drag and click and drag and alter the font and alter the spacing and all of that. Um, so here, this is the copyright page. I'm going into notes where I save the ISBNs. So I am updating the ISBNs to the create space generated ISBNs. Again, finding my font, centering things, adjusting spacing, dragging it down, and then I lock it and then select the text behind it and delete that. So and here I was just playing around because I forgot the shortcut for the copyright symbol. Um, I come back to this eventually, <laughs> but I don't think I let you see it to add the copyright uh, symbol, which when I Googled it was um, option G. So if you're on a Mac and you need to do copyright symbol option G. So here I'm in my main document and I'm going to organize pages so I can see the entire page layout. Um, I've saved my file my main illustrations file. And then I go in here and I start inserting a blank page. I'm showing you where it is in the menu in case you have Acrobat. Otherwise, there's a shortcut that is Shift Command T, as you can see in that drop down menu. So then I just start selecting an, a page and then doing um, Shift Command T, select a page, Shift Command T. And it continues to pop up the same dialog box with the preferences of my last choice. So, you know, I'm just going through this entire document and I'm adding a blank page. Now, you wouldn't have to add blank pages. The reason I do is because, you know, it's regular paper. This is not heavyweight watercolor paper or anything like that. It's, um, you know, just regular paper. I'm printing black and white. And I want to make sure that one, you know, people want to save these because they are meant to be inspirational. You know, they're sort of mantras. They're meant to, I don't know, be inspiring, animals of inspiration. And, you know, if you wanted to rip a page out and you didn't want to have to waste the illustration on the back, that's why you have a blank page on the back of each illustration. And also, you know, it helps to prevent you know, bleeding through. Um, so not only if you want to rip a page out and don't want to waste the back illustration, but if you want to color on one page and you don't want, you know, the pressure of your pencils, colored pencils or your markers to go through, you can always put a piece of cardboard in between the pages if you're using something that really saturates like alcohol markers that would definitely go through um, maybe even multiple pages. I don't know, depending on the alcohol markers you're using, but just giving you the flexibility. Now I've added all my blank pages and then I am going up to my Coloring Austin Animals um, complete draft so I can see the order of the pages that... I put in that book and then I can go through my document and add those pages in that same order. So the first ones I'm selecting are the main title page and then the copyright page. Those are uh, front and back. And I just took a sip of coffee here. <laughs> it is morning when I'm recording this. And now I'm coming in and after that, I am going to add the introduction, the introduction to the animals of inspiration. And then intro one, and it turns out that these are kind of duplicates because I had just grabbed pages that I had saved. So you can see page one and three now are pretty much the same. Uh, and so I kind of go back and figure out why I had created two versions <laughs> of that for my other animals of inspiration book, or maybe I had just saved two different ones and not clarified in my naming what was going on. So I decide I'm going to keep the one that has my links. I go back to make sure that that first page still has my name on it because on your title page, Create Space does want you to have your name the same way it is uh, on the cover, the same way it is on your um, product that you're setting up in Create Space. And now I'm adding a blank page after that. I just like the cleanliness of not having to flip pages to read. And especially since the rest of the coloring book has printing mainly on only one side of the page, you know, I don't want people to get disoriented or confused. Like, oh, I was supposed to flip that over to read that or miss things, you know, because I've already set the, um, set the standard by having one page printed. Uh, throughout the book, you know, if somebody was going to flip through it and notice that and then didn't feel like going page by page 
because when you've got a coloring book, the key is to color in it. I mean, that's what you're going to do. And so you're probably not, um, you know, looking for copy, but I've got some copy at the front and some copy at the back and that is enough for me. And so now I'm going to go up and I am going to save that. You can see at the top, um, it says page 90 of 90. So that gives me my total page count. And that is going to help us determine the width of the spine for create space and setting up the cover. I'm not showing you the entire cover design process because that might take a while, but uh, I will show you how and where we set up the cover. So now I'm just checking the Coloring Austin Animals coloring book, checking mine, making sure I've got all the pages I want. And this is on Create Space. You can see the URL there in the address bar. Uh, these are the submission guidelines for your files. And I always go back to this. I don't do enough coloring books. <laughs> I mean, over the last three years, this is my sixth that I've created. So it's not, they're not dimensions that are in my mind. But here it says with the interiors black and white and the trim size, blah, blah. Um, submit the cover on a 19 inch by 13 inch page. And then the rest of the text also says to, you know, center the front and back covers on the spine. So the spine is going to be in the very center of the document and the pages are going to be off to either side. And then the text also says to align the entire document here. I mistyped dimensions. So <laughs> I'm starting over. Um, but it also says to align the entire um, front back cover spine with bleed. So with print design, you always include extra in your dimensions for the color bleeding off the page so that when they cut, you don't have these white halos and things aren't misaligned. You always want your design to go off the page a certain distance. And they usually tell you what their bleed requirements are here. It's 0.125 inches. You can see bleed of 0.125 required on all sides. And here's where I'm calculating the spine. So I want the white paper uh, page count times this um, crazy dimension of inches. So I pull up my calculator, type in my page count of 90 even though the backs are blank, it does count as a page. And then I get 0.202. I guess it could be 0.203, but that's not, that's negligible for my spine. And so when I am setting up my spine in Illustrator, I am uh, gonna select a shape and I'm gonna make my rectangle, you know, the regular height. I'm not worrying about the bleed right now. And then I'm putting my width in of the 0.202 inches. And then that is gonna create the right dimensions for me. I can drag it, I can align it. Uh, then you're gonna see me go in and I'm actually gonna create guides for my bleed um, just in using shapes. And instead of creating formal guides, I am going to uh, just leave it as shapes in a layer just for whatever reason. That's the easiest and fastest thing for me to do right now. Here I'm going back up to check the bleed and the bleed at the bottom of the page. And then, it also says above, right under cover formatting, artwork should be shifted down so there is only 0.125 inch bleed at the bottom of the page. So even though I'm submitting this on the 19 inch by 13 inch page, they want everything to be as close to the bottom of that page as possible and for the spine to be in the center. So it's really important when you're creating files for print that you pay attention to the print specs for whatever printer you're using. Um, a file that you create for one printer will not necessarily work for another printer. It's not something you can just pass along. Uh, even the online printers, you know, every time I'm working with a client, I ask them, what printer are you using? What product are you planning on purchasing? So I can go to the website or call the printer if I need to and get the exact specs. How much bleed do you want? What you know, file type do you prefer? Uh, do you want me to include linked images or do you want me to embed linked images? Although I usually by default embed because it makes the file larger, but then I know uh, that everything is packaged together. Illustrator doesn't have a package feature the same way that InDesign does, where it will gather all your fonts and images and put them into uh, the same folder. Ah, more coffee. So here I'm just setting that 0.125 inch bleed and then just dragging my shapes down. So I've got guidelines for myself. And again, this is just setting up 
the document for my cover so I can start creating my cover. I'm gonna use a watercolor background that I've already created. Um, it's actually a painting that's hanging on my wall now. And I had another client license it for um, not exclusive use. So I still have the ability to use it for my own products uh, besides the fact that it's my own painting, my own original painting. Um, but with, with licensing, I just gave her a you know single use for her specific product. It's not exclusive, meaning I could license the same piece of art to other clients. And, and then of course I'm gonna use it for my cover. So you will see me in the next video um, with the designed cover and going into Create Space and uploading my files, uploading my cover and getting ready to proof. And this is just me dragging in that title page because I want that consistency. You know, when somebody opens the book, they see something familiar. And so that's where I'm going to start. And I hope that you've enjoyed this third installment in the process. See you again soon.